Hey guys, how are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are targeting the exam of civil services. And for that purpose, we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as means. So friends, uh, you might be aware of the fact that on this channel, we also have a series in which uh, what we do, uh, we cover your some questions from prelims perspective. So the name of this series is let's solve some questions for prelims 2020 in which we daily solve some questions relating to your prelim so that uh, uh, some practice of you people can take place so today we will be discussing the questions from the geography topic so let's see what are the questions so this is video number 29 please note this uh, so uh, the first question is consider the following statements first it is the largest coastal lagoon in india second it is the largest wintering ground for migrate migratory birds on the uh, indian subcontinent third it was designated the first indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar convention for the lake has numerous islands so the above statements refer to so this is a quite easy answer so four statements are given to you and uh, uh, if, if you are aware of even one of them you can easily mark the answer so answer is Chilka lake so very important lake it is so it is the largest coastal lagoon in India and it is also the first Indian wetland that was recognized under the um, Ramsar convention and uh, also it is largest wintering ground for migratory birds on Indian subcontinent and, and it has numerous islands so the answer is B so let's see what is the explanation so you might be aware of the fact that th this it is uh, on the eastern coast of India so if this is the map this is your western coast and then your this is your eastern coast so uh, uh, so answer is B in 1981 it was de uh, designated as the first Indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar convention so uh, due to its, uh, due to its uh, rich uh, biodiversity as shown by facts that over a million migratory waterfowl and shorebirds winter here so this uh, this is very important you must uh, must uh, know about this that uh, these migratory waterfowl and shorebirds winter here so uh, over 400 but uh, Great species uh, uh, have been recorded uh, from here and also uh, as an estuarine lagoon it sports a unique assemblage, uh, assemblage of uh, marine brackish and freshwater species so it is also a basically ecotone area uh, so ecotone area is basically that area which is uh, uh, which is kind of we can say a zone of boundary between two 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 ecosystems that that are that are different so it is a, a transitional area we can say so uh, here is freshwater ecosystem here if it is marine water ecosystem then it is combined of fresh as well as marine so coastal uh, so this uh, chilka lake is example of this type of uh, area so that's why uh, as uh, it has also freshwater river, uh, river source and uh, marine water river source so it has uh, uh, it is basically it has the, due to it a unique assemblage of marine brackish and freshwater species so uh, several rare and endangered species are found in the region and it also supports fisheries that are lifeline of the community and the lake is of great value in uh, preserving genetic diversity so now let's move to the next question next is consider the following conditions first moderate rainfall second moderate temperature third presence of sun sunshine fourth well drained for tile soils the above conditions are required for the growth of which crop so this is also quite easy question because you are given conditions so you have to choose that which of the uh, answer is correct because friends uh, rice uh, requires uh, uh, high uh, rainfall or uh, high availability of uh, water so that's why uh, a cannot be the answer so the option can be eliminated then comes your wheat uh, and then cotton and then uh, your uh, this jute and cotton so uh, we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you uh, friends uh, that the answer should be uh, B wheat and maize so but they require sunshine also they require moderate rainfall so wheat is a uh, is a uh, by your uh, this uh, rabi crop if you are aware of it wheat is a rabi crop uh, and uh, your uh, maize is a kharif crop so uh, sunshine is required but moderate temperature can do with it and moderate rainfall also is a, uh, is good and then it requires well drained fertile soils as well so uh, answer is b so let's see what is the explanation 
super C uh, for rice and uh, rice high rainfall is required. Temperature is uh, uh, also uh, that is required uh, should be quite high and clay soil is required which which can uh, hold on to out the water. So option A is incorrect. So for cotton light rainfall is needed not moderate. So that's why cotton can also be eliminated. So obviously uh, C and D are thus eliminated. Only one option is left and that is B. So jute is also a high rainfall and uh, for jute also high rainfall and temperature is needed which is uh, uh, basically this. So this jute is uh, uh, ideal for uh, for regions like uh, in India the, the West Bengal region and also you might be aware of the fact that Bangladesh is also the leading producer of the, the jute. So jute area uh, jute requires high rainfall so obviously this area uh, that is uh, that is uh, uh, where the, the where the west of, uh, west bengal is there and bangladesh is there so high rainfall takes place here and temperature is also quite high because this is a tropical area because tropic of cancer uh, passes uh, uh, through it and uh, thus uh, uh, this jute requires high temperature and high rainfall so uh, this is basically the uh, wheat requires moderate temperature and rainfall during growing season and bright sunshine at the pres uh, at the time of harvest so when when uh, it, it is grown uh, it requires just moderate temperature and rain, rainfall but when when comes its harvesting time the sunshine must be bright so it thrives best in well-drained loamy soil so wheat is grown extensively in usa canada argentina russia ukraine australia and india so in india it is grown in winter so obviously it is a rubby crop and maize requires moderate temperature rainfall and loads of sunshine so it is basically a kharif crop, crop uh, planted in uh, uh, sown in uh, august uh, august month August to August to September because I'm not from a, a, a rural bag uh, I'm, I'm do I'm uh, from a rural background but I'm not from a, a background uh, which has some relation to farming so that's why I don't know uh, the exact month in which maize is uh, uh, cultivated so maize requires moderate temperature rainfall and loads of sunshine which is uh, uh, available in those months august september october so it needs well drained fertile soils so it is grown in north america brazil china russia canada india and mexico now let's move to the next question next is uh, your third if we draw the population pyramid of a country which of the following information cannot be obtained from it a dependency ratio b whether the population is growing stable or decreasing see genetic distribution within the population d population total population size so here we have been asked that if we draw the population pyramid of a country which information cannot be obtained so friends clearly dependency ratio can be identified so if for example uh, population pyramid is of this type uh, the when population pyramid is drawn sorry uh, it is of this type then shows uh, uh, that is uh, the people uh, the age group uh, the people in the age group of 0 to 5 or for example uh, uh, 0 to 10 years is is, uh, is high and then working population uh, is thin then obviously it shows the dependency ratio is there but if uh, population pyramid is also like this then also it shows high, uh, high dependency but then uh, uh, this dependency ratio thus can be identified by identified by population pyramid so uh, a cannot be the answer uh, so b whether the population is growing stable or decreasing can also be identified so for example uh, if uh, if the population pyramid is uh, is quite uh, uh, quite in a in a symmetric way so it is quite symmetric and uh, it, it it is just balanced so then it shows that uh, the number of children but uh, the number of uh, uh, the uh, population is uh, equally being replaced so uh, as, uh, as many people number of people are uh, are, 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 are uh, uh, coming to us as are leaving so the uh, b uh, b is also the correct answer so we can identify the population whether it is growing stable or decreasing and then gender distribution within the population size can also be identified because obviously when it is run so it is checked uh, that how much male are there within a particular age group so uh, the division is done basically for example if this is uh, this is simple uh, there is a hodgepodge becoming my drawing is very bad so obviously i am writing using a digital pen so that's uh, a person who who, is, who can't write well in on paper uh, will obviously uh, use bad writing while while doing uh, using uh, digital pen so d is the answer because uh, 
total population size cannot be identified so solution is d so here you can you can see that the population pyramid mentions percentage wise distribution within the major age groups so uh, uh, without wasting much time i will show you the diagram so here is the population pyramid of india so this is approximately uh, 0 to 4 years of uh, people of age group and then 5 to 9 uh, years age group so here the, these are the number of males and uh, these are the num uh, number of females so percentage so this is in percentage so you can see that the number of people who are aged are quite less but the children are quite uh, uh, large and thus this so shows that the uh, that the population is increasing because if the more number of children are uh, be being reproduced uh, are, uh, uh, and uh, and the people of uh, number of people who are living the uh, living uh, living uh, or dying are less then obviously it shows that there is increase in population so you can identify this also so uh, males and females uh, uh, percentage ratio can also be identified identified so gender distribution can also be identified so d is the answer uh, total distribution total number of population cannot be identified so now let's move on to the next question next is which of these areas are not industrial regions first manila uh, second santiago uh, third nairobi fourth manchuria uh, uh, fifth maywood so we have to choose the correct answer so friends if you have covered your ncrts very carefully then you will be able to answer this question otherwise you will not be able to answer uh, this question with the uh, with confidence because uh, all such questions are are, are uh, asked uh, asked in upsc and and NCRTs, as I have told you again and again, they are must read. If you are, if you think that NCRTs, uh, NCRTs are just uh, basic books, then it is not correct. Whosoever is saying you that these are basic books and you no, no, need not read them, uh, it is a, it, it, it will be a complete mistake on your part. And also, uh, particularly in the context of geography, because the NCRTs of the geography are quite comprehensive. So the answer is D, friends, without stretching too much. Uh, let me tell you that the answer is uh, D. So industrial region or industrial area refers to a region with extremely dense industry. So it is usually heavily under urbanized. So Maywood is a uh, village in Illinois, USA. So statement five is correct. So they um, industrial regions emerge when a number of industries locate close to each other and share the benefits of their closeness. And major industrial regions of the world are North America, Eastern North America. So Eastern North America is basically due to coastal region and Western and Central Europe. Western uh, Europe also due to this uh, uh, coastal region and central europe also eastern europe and then eastern asia major industrial regions tend to be located in the temperate areas near seaports and especially near coal fields so uh, temperate areas why temperate areas because they are quite uh, uh, we can say uh, 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 are, are quite uh, quite comfortable in terms of climate so uh, then also see near seaports also and then especially near coal fields also industrial regions are identified because steel production and iron production production takes place uh, near the coal uh, due to due to the coal fields so uh, that's why uh, and almost every industry is dependent upon steel or uh, iron so the answer is uh, d so uh, here is i have included the diagram so you can see it so industrial regions you can see how in america this uh, region is quite uh, you can see uh, quite 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 it is uh, quite dense in terms of industrial region so then also you can see this coastal area uh, vancouver uh, this this is in canada this is this bay uh, los angeles san diego and uh, you are uh, uh, to, uh, i don't know what what is written here uh, tijuana and then you can see uh, uh, mainly the industrial regions uh, are on the are on the coastal uh, coastal parts so here you can see the uh, the africa so here the go, uh, gold mines are there and then this uh, nigeria region so ghana ghana gold mine gold mines are there so it is also quite uh, uh, dense in terms of industrial region so here you can see eastern india eastern asia uh, east asia then india also you can see ganga valley uh, has uh, quite uh, uh, density of uh, high density of industries and then other regions are also there so you can identify them now let's move to the next question next is to improve productivity without the use of fertilizers organic farming relies on first plant growth regulators second nanomaterials third genetically modified organisms so we have to choose the correct answer so friends uh, uh, the answer is d none of the above so organic farming is completely organic it is without any uh, uh, any such use that is uh, relating to chemical fertilizers or without any uh, type of uh, uh, 
of man-made intervention so obviously natural interventions could be there so you can arrange for water but the, the water is also a natural resource so you you uh, don't rely on man-made sources or uh, genetically modified organisms are basically gm crops so they are they are they are modified by the human intervention so third is uh, also uh, third can also not be the answer so obviously the answer is d so let's see the explanation so organic farming excludes or strictly limits the use of various methods including synthetic petrochemical fertilizers and pesticides plant growth regulators such as hormones antibiotic used in livestock genetically modified organisms human sewage sludge and nanomaterials for reasons including sustainability openness independence health and safety so organic farming is a form of agriculture that relies on techniques such as crop rotation green manure compost and biological pest control so since 1990 the market for organic food and other products has grown rapidly reaching 63 billion dollar uh, in worldwide in 2012 so it is also now growing on so friends this is all about today's video and uh, if you like the questions then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and before closing the video let me tell you that we have various series for the purpose of CSC preparation which are uh, uh, in which what we do we cover your standard books uh, like uh, modern India a brief history of modern India by, by of spectrum publications and then Indian polity uh, by M. Lakshmi Kant and then Indian economy by Hermes Singh and uh, geography by G.C. Leung and also we have series that are covering your geography uh, uh, NCRTs history NCRTs polity NCRTs science NCRTs so all these series in uh, in these what we do uh, we cover your syllabus in a time bound manner so uh, we, we for example we give you a, a timetable uh, to be for example uh, for to complete your uh, geography and CRTs we give you 45 days and in 45 days each uh, the target of each day uh, is told to you and you are required to prepare that target from the NCRTs and in the evening we take your test of 10 MCQs each and at the end of the series you are given uh, a complete compilation of all the MCQs so this helps you in a completing your syllabus in a time bound manner so different series are there uh, for the purpose as I have shown you uh, so how these series benefit you obviously friends uh, you might be aware of the fact that these books are the foundations so if you uh, if you are a serious aspirant then you must be aware of the fact uh, that uh, these books are required and they are uh, they are well recommended books and also uh, most of the students today prepare from home so they are not in uh, uh, metropolitan areas or urban areas for preparation for taking coaching or and they face the problem of completing the syllabus in a time bound manner but this uh, uh, the strategy ensures that you uh, that you cover your syllabus in a time bound manner uh, and also entire syllabus is covered through mcq mode so uh, this this is very important because uh, not only reading is important but you must also know how the questions are asked in the upsc because uh, you must be aware of the uh, the pattern of the UPSC and that all that understanding comes only when you solve the questions and also uh, uh, this completion of syllabus in a time bound manner ensures the confidence in you and, and ensures discipline in your studies uh, uh, the syllabus of UPSC is quite wide and unless and until you don't cover it in a time bound manner uh, then confidence doesn't build up and self confidence is very much uh, important thing if you want to crack this examination so a disciplined preparation gives you much needed self confidence and also now is the best time to start so if if we if i uh, say that then prelims is just uh, uh, six months or not just six months but it is just five months today if you are seeing seeing this video uh, then you must be aware that uh, this video is being made on 26 december so there are just five months left in your uh, in your uh, prelims so uh, i don't know if you are waiting for anything what that thing is but do ensure that you cover your syllabus in a uh, proper manner so that you don't compromise your uh, time because time is the most preci precious thing in life uh, you are not here to uh, uh, to cover to complete your to to cover your syllabus in five years or to crack this examination in eight or ten years so that is totally a wrong approach i simply suggest to the students that if you are uh, if you are if you if you are serious then don't waste your time don't waste your time and start prepare prepare preparing with a with a serious mindset so friends uh, if you are interested in all these series then you can check the description 
description box so in the description box the link of various series that we have for the purpose is given for example link of indian economy series is there geography ncrt history ncrt uh, and then modern india by rajiv ahir uh, uh, spectrum publications uh, 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 book with the link of that also so different books is uh, different uh, different uh, uh, different links are given there and also you can join our telegram channel uh, the where we have more than 15,000 students uh, that follow us and uh, these students have access to various resources that we share for the purpose of CSE preparation so also the discussion of these PDFs uh, uh, that uh, uh, so the, the PDF of these discussion for example these questions will also be available in this telegram channel so if you join this telegram channel you will be able to download the PDFs as well so do ensure that you are among those 15,000 students uh, that follow us on the telegram and uh, do ensure that uh, that you check for this you have to check the description box for the link so this is all about friends today's video do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead